Vou tentar falar com o meu melhor inglês, que é muito fraquinho, mas pronto, é, é aquilo que eu tenho. My name is Rob, I run a website called McJojo Life. The goal of what I do is to call out fakes, frauds, phonies, con men and pedophiles in the martial arts industry. I've been in the martial arts industry for over 25 years of my life, starting when I was 12 years old. There is no regulating body to the martial arts industry. There is no requirement whatsoever that you have to have a certain amount of time or experience to start a martial arts school. Um, no one's going to stop you if you do lie. Um, so there is no real rules or regulations in the martial arts industry. And because of that, people get taken advantage of. So because of that question with that particular student, the next day I started to make those jokes. Um, but we finish our filming coming up in January. And so I have huge announcements I can't even make right now. I wish I could. Just got a new executive producer, um, so it's a huge deal. But I can't say anything until the paperwork signs sign until next week. So we set up a seminar where we hired a guy to come in to his fake martial arts. And so when he came in to do so, he was under the impression that everyone that was there had never trained or had limited training. Of course, I picked nothing but people who would train forever. Um, and, you know, there were various states and sizes and You know, we had a 120-pound Rob Maga instructor lady. We had, like, a 6'3", 200-something-pound capoeira instructor. So I just, like, picked all these different martial arts instructors from the area and brought them in. Wow. And so the first hour, I told them, I said, all right, guys, whatever he does, whatever he says, just go with it. Just go with it. We'll just see what happens, right? We won't call him out. We won't call him a fraud. We'll just pretend it works. And we did. It was all nonsense. But, so for the first hour... It's very lazy. No one's sweating. It, it doesn't work. Uh, but we're all pretending. But I told everyone for the second hour, I want you to just be yourself. Whatever you would normally say, whatever you would normally do, I want you to do that. And man, it got wild. So after, so for that second hour, as soon as the second hour hit, everyone's hand in the room starts raising, asking questions. And the instructor is so nervous that he is profusely sweating through his white shirt. Like, we haven't done anything really physical, and he's just sweating. So in order for him to get back on track with the class, he goes, all right, guys, I'm getting a lot of questions. Um, I want to make sure that we stay on technique because I only have so much time. What would you guys like to learn? And someone in the back goes, I want to learn a knife defense. So his eyes light up. He gets so excited. He goes over to his bag. He pulls out a rubber training knife, and he hands it to the only student in the room who has never trained any martial arts at all. Okay. The only guy. There's only one. So he hands it to him. We didn't set it up that way. That's just how it works. So then he goes, all right, well, what kind of attack are we talking about? And someone in the back of the room again goes, what about like an upward prison shank, like a stab to the stomach? Mm -hmm. And so he goes, okay. And he asks our guy who had never trained before to stab him in the stomach. So he attempts this like odd knife block where he's crossing his arms and he's trying to downward block by using his knuckles to hit the guy in the arm to disarm using pressure points. Mm -hmm. Well, it doesn't work. He winds up getting stabbed like 17 times with this rubber training. <laughs> so it, it gets a little bit. So after that, somebody in the audience who is now no longer just going along with it goes, wouldn't this work better? And does what we call a two-on-one grip on the knife arm. Mm -hmm. So he's got both of his hands on the knife arm and he asks the guy to stab his hand. Mm -hmm. So clearly, the person's suggestion from the audience would work better. But the instructor who's teaching is like, oh, no, 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 you don't want to do that because where do you go from there? And in my mind, I'm thinking, not get stabbed. That's the whole point, yeah, right? Exactly. Yeah, so there's a lot of different people over the years I've been able to talk with who were involved in various martial arts issues. It could be something from fraud, which they were just ripped off financially. It could be rape. It could be pedophilia. Um, it could be um, an actual cult. So there was a guy we actually interviewed also for our documentary. His name is Lewis Martin. And Lewis Martin wrote a book, and that, that book is called The True Believers. And it's about his personal experience in a martial arts cult. Now, his experience was strange. It's probably not the strangest I've seen, but over the years I've talked with students who were waterboarded. Um, I've talked with students, one uh, person in particular, his name is Jody Plowshay. Um, Jody Plowshay was a very of a martial arts instructor who sexually abused and abducted the student. Uh, the, Jody was a child at the time, and he was being molested by his instructor. No one was aware of that. Eventually, that came to an instructor abducted him and took him away for about two weeks. 
No one knew where they were. Eventually, they get to a phone, and police were able to trace the call to find him. So that was a super high-profile case. And so everything was caught on film in, in the news media. So when they brought Jody back to his parents live on television, the first question the dad asked him is, did he touch you inappropriately? Yeah. And Jody said no. Well, the police did a rape kit and found out that that was not true. He had been not only molested during that time, but for a long time previous. Well, the father himself freaks out, and he starts drinking heavily. He cannot cope with the fact that this happened to his son. So he found out where they were going to be flying that instructor and what airport they'd be flying him into for his court date. So he stands on a payphone. All of this, by the way, you can look up online. It's all there for people to see. It's a very famous case. He's on a payphone wearing a and he's talking to a friend of his on the phone. The cameras from the news are directly across from him filming him on the payphone. They didn't know who he was. So right about that time is when they start walking the child molester, the old the instructor, uh-huh. um, hand in hand with two police officers down this hallway in this airport. The dad turns around, pulls out a revolver, and shoots them in the head right there on live television. Well, they got that. On camera, wow. All on, and the wildest part about it was like, and you know, people can feel however they want to feel about this. I'm not telling people how to feel about this because obviously it's a sensitive subject, but that father did not do one day in prison. Not one. Yeah, 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 of course. I would love to meet George Dillman. I think that the cool thing about, not the cool thing, I think the most interesting thing about George Dillman is his arc. If you really look into George Dillman's career, George Dillman started off as an actual competitor. He did fight people. He did go to competition. He was known for being a competitor. And he was friends with Muhammad Ali. That is something that we can look up. He actually did buy Muhammad Ali's gym. Uh-huh. Um, so, so some piece of him at one time was somewhat legitimate. But then over the years, I think he developed what I call Steven Seagal syndrome. <laughs> and what I mean by that is I think he started off as legitimate, but his ego and all the people around him were a perfect breeding ground to create a cult leader. And so for him, the delusion becomes true when everyone around you tells you it's true. Yeah. So it's like the emperor's new clothes. If I tell you the sky is red and you don't want to tell me different and you say, oh, yeah, of course it's red. And then I look around the room for everyone else to tell me if, I'm tr- if it's true or not. And everyone agrees with me and you lie to me constantly about what's right and wrong, then eventually I might actually believe the sky is red yeah. because that's what everyone around is agreeing. So I think that his delusion started off as a lie, but then I think because everyone around him in his world refused to tell him the words no or talk, call him out when he's wrong, that now he believes he has magic chi powers. Yeah. And he can knock people out without – he believes that he can grab a woman's wrist and he can feel the wrist and be able to tell the sex of a child when the, the, the woman is that dying. video. Yeah, you said yeah. <laughs> That's incredible. I mean, so That's incredible. He believes he can move people in lines without touching them. He said that he, on camera, has said that he stands in line at Starbucks, and he'll use his chi powers while people are standing in line to move them without them knowing, <laughs> and they'll look around who, who did that. <laughs> like, he believes that. And so, again, this it's, like, really funny, but it's really dark. Yes. It's like the darkest paper in the world because people pay that man, or they did. I think I'm more retired. Uh, the guy who's taken over for him now, his name is Chris Thomas. Um, and so that guy is just as delusional, but a little more eloquent in speaking. Tu vais ver a quantidade de vídeos que existem, uh, atuais, não só antigos, uh, com malta, uh, com sistemas de, 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 de defesa pessoal e com estes poderes do Chi. Uh, epá, é incrível, é incrível. E há valores muito fixos a serem passados quando, quando se aprende artes marciais. Para além da questão física, já também valores pá, de Sim. confiança, disciplina, respeito. Mas em relação ao off-show, estamos sempre receptivos a uh, receber sugestões vossas. Eu, eu, eu escolhi aqui o Rob porque eu sigo esta página uh, e tenho mais malta que eu gostaria de, de conversar. Páginas que eu sigo e do YouTube e do... E, de, e do Instagram, mas se vocês quiserem que eu fale, tente falar com alguém. Mas, se forem em inglês, já sabem, é com este nível de inglês muito básico, mas pronto. Mas eu pergunto que eu estou muito É maluco, beleza para todo mundo. Maluco, beleza.